guys, and welcome to the unboxing of the Kingsguard uh, chapter pack. It's it's crazy. It's going to be a wild ride here in the next uh, 20, 30 hour. I don't mm -hmm. know. It could take Two a while hours. to expound upon this. Uh, you have your favorite Stephen and Robert here. Um, hi, Robert. How you doing? And uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna do a duo here. It's just the two of us, because we are uh, we're crazy just about this. Terribly pack. interested in this chapter pack, and it's we bananas. said everyone else stay away. B A N A. We've got it covered. We don't want to know Zach's crazy justifications for this and that. Here's why this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's I can see a deck that splashes I'll three say of these things to do this <laughs> random thing maybe once in a game. Um, all right, so what do you think? Let's kick it off. Let's kick it off. Let's kick it off with the Baratheons here. That's right. Um, you want to punt? I'll... <laughs> sure. Okay, so first card we have is the Shadow Killer. It is a Shadows card, two additional to bring it out. Uh, one Strength, Military, and Intrigue Icon, Mercenary. House Baratheon only. What? This has so much text. Stealth, Deadly, and then it reads, Response, after Shadow Killer comes out of Shadows, choose and kill a character controlled by a player with more cards at his or her command than you. Cannot be saved. Hello. It's interesting. It's it's certainly good at face value. I mean, my initial impression of this was like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 that really is. That really is it. It's crazy, honestly. So let me tell you why this card is great. Um, and I'll tell you why it's not. <laughs> okay. Or maybe should we start with why it's not great? Okay. Uh, this is why it's not great. Conditions. Um, conditions. Cards at command. Yes. Right? Big element of this. So you've got to have less cards in your hand on the board combined. Yeah, hand in play and um, shadows count. And shadows, yeah. Okay, so hand in play and shadows. So if you're sum of all that, which is crazy by the way. So imagine you're in a tournament, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got shadow killer and shadows. And so you're like, how many cards are in your hand? <laughs> uh, you got any cards and shadows over there? Any 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 cards back <laughs> there down there that are doing things? Um, so it's. It's going to be a hassle. Anyway, yeah. but the cards of command thing is interesting because it essentially means that you're having to be losing, mm -hmm. technically, to get this awesome effect. Yeah. Um, but that said, let's talk about Baratheon a little bit. All right. Can we talk about Baratheon? <laughs> Baratheons, man. Here's a couple <laughs> things about Baratheon. Uh, one, they're not great at drawing cards right now. That's right. Except for Val Laughing Storm. If you don't do that, you're, you're not really doing it. you got to kind of do fury and weird stuff to get cards. And that's overall not netting you command, so right. it's cool. Second, guess who loves to play out of the discard pile? Baratheon. <laughs> and guess what cards are not counted for your command? You know? Baratheon, discard pile. Yeah, exactly. pile. So when you're talking about uh, a card that really, I think, plays to make strengths out of Baratheon's weaknesses, I think Shadow Killer is the ticket because you're playing against Lannister, you're playing against Martell, now you're playing against a lot of these other Shadow decks that are probably going to run Jamie and draw a bunch of cards. They're going to have a bunch of cards. You're not very great at like preventing Valor, you know, so you might not have the most on the board. And now all of a sudden you can kill anything on the board. Yeah. And it cannot be saved, no questions asked. It's true. Uh, so I, I think this is a really strong card. And then it stays on the board. Stealth, Deadly. Yeah. That stays on the board. Great keywords. He's, he's going to win challenges, especially Stealth and Deadly on an Intrigue challenge. Mm-hmm. It's like he's he's gonna get you what you want. <laughs> he's coming at you. So I think I think there's a huge amount of value packed into this guy. Just absolutely huge. I um, agree. Uh, I mean that that said, uh, can be saved. Dupes be down. I yeah, mean, you, just it like, cannot be saved. Uh, that said, I will say he's a little bit expensive. Uh, he is super burn susceptible and only one strength. Um, there are some drawbacks here, mainly cost and overall strength. But what you're getting for four. Is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, that cannot be saved. Two keywords, and it's in-house only, which is a comfort for yeah, uh, a lot of us. Be, yeah. Sure. Uh, so I'm a fan. Uh, there's definitely reasons to not like this, but I think there's way more too. Yeah, so I think some players will look at this and say, ah, the conditional is a little bit weird for such an expensive card. But I would just say, if you look at what Baratheon actually does, it should yeah. be lower in command. It should than than it most should. other other houses. Mm -hmm. Next up, oh, gosh. Mel. Hi, Roll. Hey, here's another <laughs> Mel. Uh, look, she's four costs. She's unique. She's three strengths, standard, uh, intrigue, power, lady, a Asai, renown, holy crest, holy characters, new dead pile, count the strength towards dominance. Talk about some value. And a response <laughs> after you win dominance, choose a holy character in your dead pile, put it into play. Uh, the problem with this card, of course, is that 
It's OP. How many mills? <laughs> how many broken mills do we need? Not and I when I say broken, I mean in in all in terms the nicest of way possible. Yeah, I don't. I don't. We like her as a person, but not as a card. It's not truly a broken <laughs> card. It doesn't break the game or anything. It's very good. That is yeah, just kind true. of very good. You know, you grew up using that vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. so it's a very good card, but there's a lot of very good mills. Like yes. every mill. They're all fantastic. It's very good. It's sort of like having a Tyrion. They're all fantastic. For instance, if you're running a holy deck. Except for the core box. I, I think if you're running like a, a power of faith, which you're always running a power of faith, rush, a sigh, like just get a bunch of things out there, get renowned, and use the unopposed mill, dominance mill, to just rake in power. That's one build of this. But I think if you're also looking into the Holy Control builds, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about Red Queen's Faithful and uh, Altar of Fire and the nonsense that the Asai actually have that seems nobody wants to play. Uh, that <laughs> Why? That just discard ludicrous amounts <laughs> of cards. Uh, I think this is unbelievable. You can't, you can't keep uh, Red Queen's Faithful dead, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. Like, does everyone realize... Everyone has to realize how crazy that is. Yeah. You have to kill this Mel, then you have to kill Red Queen's Faithful, <laughs> then one of them's getting brought back by many powers along sleep, That's if right. not other cards. And then comes the other one. And then one of them's getting brought back with it. It's like, yeah. come on. Like, how much character control can a deck have to it's deal true. with this? I mean, this, this Melisandre reminds me, or not reminds me, but to me is a version that has more staying power for the aside deck that it brings rather than the kind of retarded rush that the unopposed uh, Melisandre brings. It still has renown. It yeah. still has renown. You're going to rake it in, so you probably don't lose terribly much in the Three closing challenges, power. challenges, non-kneeling. But, but I'm kind of having to split hairs here to find a fault with this card. Uh, it's four cost? Oh, that's, that's kind of a lot, but it's totally worth it. But then, uh, last but not least, you are probably already going to be winning dominance, potentially, because this is the house that has the Iron Throne that lets you automatically win dominance anyway, so maybe it's redundant, but this is a reinfor reinforcing feature. I don't know. It's one of those things that's like the card wraps itself all up in a package. Yeah. I mean, the card does so everything for itself. It doesn't need anything outside of this card. It gives you the ability to win dominance, and then it triggers off winning dominance. You're right. It's like, You're right. come on. It's the dominance mill. This is great. It's great. Uh, five out of five. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> five out of five clowns. <laughs> clowns. <laughs> uh, give me Graydon, man. Graydon. Uh, why don't you read this? It's, it's your Zero house. cost. Graydon, good brother. Yet another good brother. Uh, <laughs> two costs with the icons Greyjoy always has. Uh, Bannerman and a lord. Discard him from play if you control fewer locations than any opponent. Can it be saved on a Greyjoy? That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well... He, you know. He costs you nothing. Here's the thing. I, I get this. I get it. He's uh, a rich man's refugee. <laughs> Gray, Greyjoy's, you know, Greyjoy's good at having low strength or low cost dudes that are high strength. Mm -hmm. right? You know, we're, we're, we get it. <laughs> uh, this doesn't really add anything interesting or I would say like fantastic to uh, the Greyjoy card pool. Yeah. It's a one of that you throw into maybe a choke deck. It's kind of weird because you want to put this guy on setup, but then it's like, well, what if they set up two locations in my one, and he just gets discarded. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, so, and it's a passive, it's gonna happen. I don't know, I mean, he's a bannerman, so you can deal two locations if he and his bro, I assume it's his brother, are out and about doing things, uh, which is ultimately his strength. I think that condition's pretty hard. I know everyone thinks that Greyjoy just floods the board with locations. Everybody does that these days. Don't you give me that. Yeah, it's true. I, the boards has, I see lately are Everyone has a million contest. King's Roads and a million economy <laughs> locations. I'm about to ask if people are even running Valor anymore. <laughs> Gaston Greys and, and, you know, three Pentoshi. The whole thing. The whole every house runs locations. This is true. not true. anything fancy. So I, I, think, I think he'll get discarded a lot. And uh, he's just a zero-cost chat. I, I think when you're looking at where to cut from a deck... He's going to be at the top of the list. He didn't do anything. That, and, but that's the ultimate uh, reason for cutting him is that when something costs nothing, the value isn't necessarily to the curve, especially with a discard effect like this that you can't cancel prevent in any way, but rather how does this impact the slots that I'm using in my deck? Right. Uh, so is this something that you want to draw, that you want to set up and play and all that kind of stuff? With such an easy way of getting out of the play, uh, it's a little risky. Yeah. But eh, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Uh, let's go on to the Longship Grey Ghost. I love the name of this, by the way. It's a really good looking ship, too. I'll just, uh, you want me to just take the Grey Ghost? Yeah, 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 I'll take them all. <laughs> Shadow Zero, uh, unique warship, uh, Longship Grey Ghost. I would say, just right off the bat, that this is a one of, right? A unique yeah, Shadows yeah, card is always yeah. one of. Uh, House Grey only after you win an unopposed challenger, turn him to Shadows. When he comes out of Shadows, choose a character. That character cannot defend this phase. It's pretty cool. 
Yeah, so this is um, obviously parallels your scouting vessel, mm -hmm. also costs two, but can be used during a challenge, kind of screw with the math a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see any reason why one replaces the other. I don't think these are mutually exclusive. I, I think this is a strong card. I mean, you pay two for the rest of the game, likely you have one character on their side of the board that cannot defend during That's a challenge. Right. And I mean, when you're looking at it, look, look at the builds that this is great against. I mm -hmm. mean, Viper's Bannerman can't defend. You know, Stark armies can't defend. Yeah. Uh, any number of these big characters, even, you know, the Starks are great at this, using frozen moats and crazy stuff and defending all sorts of challenges. It's like, no, you can't defend. Yeah. So there's some power there, too. The fact that they can't even jump in the challenge and then boost themselves in weird ways yeah. uh, is something fantastic. So I think this is a strong card. It's cool. I like it. What would you say that it won't work on your first challenge, whatever that happens to be? That you have to win an unpost challenge first, and then it's only subsequent to that that you get to start shutting well, down Well, I mean, so you pay two to put into shadows, right. and you bring it out that first challenges phase mm -hmm. for nothing. I mean, you bring it out, and then it comes out of shadows, you choose a character they can't defend. So if you don't win an unopposed challenge, it just stays there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you do have to win some unopposed, but Greyjoy can do that. It's yeah. not an issue. And with Intimidate, this works really well because like, you might have one dude on the board you can't Intimidate out. Yeah. <laughs> well, he can't That's defend, sweet. and now we get this goes back to Shadow. So I think it'll see synergy in cool. a lot of uh, a lot of good Game of, uh, Game of Thrones builds. <laughs> Agate builds. All right, so next up, personal favorite here. That's a Lannister card. His name's Tywin. His last name's <laughs> Lannister. Anyway, he's four cost, four strength, Tricon, what? Renowned Lord and reads Tywin Lannister, which is him, uh, does not kneel to attack an opponent with more cards in hand than you. All right. So already impressive. Um, this is the first Tywin that we've ever gotten that doesn't have a crest. Worth noting. First one that we've ever gotten that doesn't cost five. So maybe that's why he costs a little bit less. I'll bet he started with a Noble Crest and then got stripped because it was too bonkers. Oh, yeah. Power of Blood with this guy is retarded. Yeah. Anywho, um, so first impression, we've known about this guy for a while, uh, at least to me, is that this guy, first and foremost, is a Klansman Tywin. Uh, Klansmen have lacked a Closer-type character for a long time. Uh, this is the kind of character that can do it because he has Renown, all three icons, and potentially doesn't kneel to attack. So there's a lot of power coming in what, what real is quick. It, what is it that keeps Klansmen but out of the championship at this point? They're janky. Um, that's <laughs> that's it. It's Nightmares. It's very janky. Um, <laughs> nightmares Tim at Valor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nightmares is Tim at Valor. Um, but, but they're janky uh, because they kind of sit at this weird crossroads of needing a lot of card draw to fuel their discard effects. Um, so you do want to be drawing out a lot of cards, but then probably two if not three of those a turn you will want to use to fuel your black ears your uh and then i'm brain farting on the other ones uh veil scavengers and all this kind of thing uh that give clansmen their little bit of edge so you should be sitting at zero cards but you should be drawing five every turn no matter what uh because that's the only way it's ever going to work so with that kind of card drawn that kind of fuel for discard this fits right in there in my opinion but of course you're never going to have a Tricon with Renown without all kinds of speculation into what other decks he's going to fit in. Uh, in or out of Lannister, uh, I've, I, I've seen, oh, actually. For, <laughs> if I imagine this guy doesn't have any text aside from Renown, I don't know how he's not like a one of in every Lannister deck. That's true. Unless there's a time when that you're running instead of him. That's true. But like a four cost, and I don't know, I haven't, you know, I don't build Lannister decks that <laughs> <Much>. often. Uh, <laughs> But yeah. I would say that uh, the four cost slot isn't something that Lannister is uh, all over. Although the Brigands now have started to start to fill those four cost slots, I think mm -hmm. of Lannister as five cost and, and three even cost. the uh, King's Landing Guard is a great four cost slot. Um, but yeah, that, that's this question you have to ask yourself: is is he going to take up a slot, even one? Uh, these become difficult questions the longer the game goes on because there's more options to choose from. Man. But he is fantastic, no what matter a, what. What a dude. But, what a boss. But like th that's the ultimate problem with Lannister is that ultimately, if you're playing it right, unless you're going up against Martell with all kinds of reveal effects and add into your hand, Lannister should never be without more cards in their hand than their opponent if they're doing it right. Now granted, there will be occasions where that invariably happens. It happens even in my PBJ decks, because I just kind of... And you can make it happen, you know, if you want to exactly. turn this guy on. Exactly. So, not to say that there isn't a place for him in other decks, but without question, Klansman is his home, in my opinion. I see I see really cool stuff, like, uh, you know how Red Viper hits the table, and it's like, he has three characters, and I've got three. It's like, do I really want to play anything else to turn him on right now? Mm-hmm. 
I feel like it's the same kind of thing where I'm looking at and uh, Taiwan's on the tail. I'm like, well, I could play out these two dudes, mm -hmm. and that would give me fewer cards than him. Yeah. Which is what I want to do, but uh, mm -hmm. then he could play three cards yeah. and go down. So then you're like, ah, and then it could be like, okay, we're going even in the challenges. And then you're like, you killed the wrong dwarf to me. And now, not only is one of my dudes now, but he's he's attacking me three challenges with a round. This guy's a closer. He, you have to answer him. Yeah. So the clansman closer. I, I love him. It's great. He's fantastic. Um, next up, the hound. First off, this card is phenomenal. Second off, uh, his name's the hound. He's a shadows card with zero cost to come out. Four strength, military icon only, Kingsguard traded, House Lannister only, no attachments except weapon, and then finally, the Hound gets plus one strength for each card in Shadows. What? Okay. What? Obvious, uh, obviously, Tunnels is a thing. Yeah. Obviously, Tunnels is a thing, but he's Tunnels times two, plus, because Tunnels is only cards that you have in Shadows. This is cards in Shadows, no matter who has them. Yeah. So, pulling from Shadows strength across the board, he is ridiculously cheap for what he brings to the table. Yes, he only has one icon. Yes, that's probably his only drawback. But... And he's stealthable. He, yes. Uh, <laughs> you have, this is the house that already gave us little birds, so you can add yep. another icon. You can add stealth. You can uh, put attachments on him to give him other icons, and it would still be cost-effective. Ridiculously cost effective. Uh, like, uh, put any of the. Like, I wonder uh, what kind of weapon attacks he can have. So he can only have weapons, which right. is very fitting for the hound. But there's weapons out there that do good yes. cool things. Uh, yeah, it is only weapons. So yeah, is Widow's Will a weapon? Widow's Will is a weapon. Um, so I guess that kind of scratches the the, uh, the diplomacy thing and the uh, what was it, court advisor and all that kind of stuff that adds yeah. icons. But uh, you still have Little Bird. That that does still hold. But uh, anywho, uh, he's great. He's super cheap. He's super effective. He meshes right into a deck that is already pre-existing and super powerful. This will only make it more so. Yeah, I think he's like the one of in any kind of Lannister shadowy mm -hmm. kind of thing. Or yeah. even not. I mean, two cost for four strength military. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I guess, yeah, because Lannister's not lighting the world up on military all the time. Yeah. I mean, that's that's super cool. cost effective. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would take it just for that. So he's very straightforward, um, and he can see a lot of play in a lot of different decks. So I like him. All right. Sounds good. Let's go to Ariane Martell. Shadows, Shadows 1, unique lady, three cost, intrigue power, house Martell only. Um, after she comes out of Shadows, choose and reveal a new plot card. And that's you. You don't get to choose an opponent mm -hmm. and reveal a new one. You, you choose and reveal a new plot card. Um, Problem with this Arion is the same problem with uh, Melisandre. Mm -hmm. The other one or is, Tywin, is just anything, yeah. bonkers. Yep. good. Um, but the way that this Arion gets around that, I think, is that she's not competing for a slot with other Arion if you're running just a weird Shadows mm -hmm. deck. It's totally right. Plot, plot twisty. I, you know, ob this obviously is in like, you could run this with city plots and maesters, and then you're just getting silly. Citadel Law, Neil and Maester, reveal a new plot, bring her out of shadows, reveal a new plot, all of a sudden you've got four city plots in your use pile, and I haven't even done anything yet, you know, like that yeah. kind of stuff. So I think I think Martell will definitely find a way to abuse this card, and uh, there will be one build. Here's my prediction. Ooh. There will be one build. I don't know if it will be at Worlds, mm -hmm. maybe a little early, but there will be one build in the future who that abuses uh, this Aryan in the uh, plot cycle yeah. fashion. I agree. Uh, she she does something completely different, something that can be as powerful, not more so than what the other Ariane can do, because the plots these days are redonkulous, and <laughs> she can bonkers. She can leverage that. Uh, she, I mean, she's hiding in shadows. You could do crazy things like Valor, and then uh, pop her out during uh, I don't know a marshaling phase, and then you have. Uh, if you can afford that somehow, it'd probably be weird to get. You can get, that get gold. There's a way. There's ways to get gold in the uh, in the thing now. Yeah, there, there are. are. There are weird ways to get gold pre uh, <laughs> pre chat or pre marshalling. But but all that to say is that any intrepid deck builder will find a way to leverage this to maximum effect. And a lot of people, I think, have right off the bat said that she isn't uh, worth taking the spot that the other one would take, which I would disagree with, just yeah. categorically. I mean, how about this? How about She's you do, less obvious. How about we, we do take them by surprise, mm -hmm. and then you flip her into two of the spears. There you go. It's like, I want initiative, and now I don't kneel, and I get three challenges for free. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good turn. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll take this Aryan to do that, maybe so. over the other one from time to time. <laughs> from time to time. It's got potential. <laughs> so anyway, she's good. A lot of value there. Good cost. Yeah. 
And I mean, you throw in any time you can just throw in a valor and not face the the zero gold or the the zero claim and the the two gold and all that. It's true. Is awesome. So like, I mean, you could you could play a valor and then flip in, or you could you could play awesome gold, play all this stuff, then flip mm -hmm. into a valor in the challenges phase. And who knows? Yeah, there's just possibilities. There's, there's crazy things everywhere. Don't let people tell you you can't do it. <laughs> yeah, the world's open to you. You can be anything you want. Um, next up, we have... Are you reading this one? I'll do the Pale Stone yeah, Sword Guard, because it kind of looks like me. <coughs> Is that you? Uh, it's like a He-Man version of me. Uh, two cost, oh, non-unique Bannerman for House Dane. He's a one strength and one single military icon. This is a weird Martell character we're looking at here. I like that purple banner. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, Pale Stone is awesome mm -hmm. also. That's really cool. Any phase, kneel one influence or discard a card from your hand to give Pale Stone Sword Guard plus one strength and icon of your choice until the end of the phase. Let me tell you why this is interesting. There's a lot of reasons. Uh, <laughs> one is he's a bannerman, right? We were talking about the old bannerman that gives you immune to events. So this guy's out and that guy's out. All of a sudden, two characters are immune to events. Including the Vipers immune to events. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to bleach the board, and you know it's just not going to be fun. Is it bananas? It's it's <laughs> going to be silly. But also, uh, let's say you're a Martell player, and you have tons of influence for Red Vengeance and stuff, and you don't need it. Maybe you got two, three open. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't. There's no limit to this. It's true. Neil and influence give Any him phase. plus one and an icon. Any phase. Get Neil and give plus yeah. one and an icon. Neil and give plus. It's <sighs> like I can do this during a challenge, guys. Mm -hmm. I can I can pump his strength anytime I want. That's I true. can discard cards. I can es especially on something like a uh, what is it? Uh, to the spears turn. Yeah. Anything. It's like well, what do I need to do? It's Two like influence makes him a tricon at three strength. It's like when you have that uh, when you have that uh, Lord of the Rings where it's like oh we failed the quest by two who's going to discard cards to bring us up. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is the guy. It's like, oh, you blocked with six? Well, I'm going to discard three. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of thing. You yeah. can do that. So, uh -huh. And so as the defender, do you defend that challenge? Or mm -hmm. do you just say, well, he's gonna, he's got influence open, so it's pointless for me to do this. Yeah. And then if they don't do it, then you just play the bleeds. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think on first glance, this is such a, a wiener card. And but, on second glance, yeah. like all Martell cards, it's like, well, maybe if I threw that uh, Orphan of Greenblood in my deck, it would actually work well. And, and, it's like, and even House Dane is a fantastic trait for this guy to have. It's true. That's actually quite true. Yeah. The Danes are coming. <laughs> the Danes are coming. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but they're coming. All right. So that's a great card. Uh, we also have what looks to be another great card. The art is fantastic. It's the Umber Champion. Guys with swords. S-words. Uh, and blood on them, no less. Uh, two costs, two strength, two icons, military power, Bannerman trait, any phase, discard Umber Champion from play, cannot be saved, to stand each defending character. What? <laughs> I mean, yes. This is fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. I love this card. Yeah, he's he's pretty phenomenal, isn't he? Yeah, I and think the, this is the biggest. You look at the other Stark banner and discard a card and give strength, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, well, if he's out too, then stand each defending I character. I can defend everything and then just defend. What's more is, is that this also has additional leverage in a melee game. Uh, yes. For politicking and all this kind of stuff. It might not be <laughs> oh, you. Oh, wow, that's awesome. It might not be you. <laughs> uh, so it's like, hey, you want me to stand all your defenders? Well, <laughs> tell you what. What's in it for me? I'll do that for... <laughs> That's cool. No, I think this guy is great. Uh, I mean, he's great. I mean, what what do you two costs for two strength and two icons? That alone makes him reasonable. Uh, but then you have this ability. It's just like, wow! I want three of this in every deck, more or less. Can you imagine if he had had? Uh, it it negates the initial problem. Can you imagine if he had had stalwart? He like discarded him at the top of the deck. That would be annoying. I know why he doesn't have it. That yeah, would be that would be way too much. But <laughs> this is a card that effectively like trumps uh, some of the initiative gamble, uh, or at least a big part of it in terms of like, oh, I'm on defense. How am I going to handle all the challenges that I need to defend and potentially win? King's Landing Char Q. Characters with renown. Watch out. King's um, Landing Q. Yeah. Defend a challenge. Draw a card. Yeah. Hello, Starks. I'm saying. Yeah. So this is potential written all over it. I don't play Starks, so I don't know all of them. But You know what? They good. are more and more. I never saw them like this, but they are. It makes so much sense that they're the defendy house. Sure. They're defenders. Yeah. I it mean, they, they got the they went, frozen stand stand people up, frozen outposts, stand them up, and win challenges. And they went on the offense one time, and look where that got them. So yeah. then it's like, let's turtle up. Who wants to camp? They have the turtles in the game. I've, I've got marshmallows. They're good. Yeah, I like this guy. Not like, not on every deck, but it's two two slot is a is a hard slot to fill sometimes. Yeah, so I like that. It's true. Next up, I want to talk about Mo Kalen. Shadow Zero, unique uh, Westeros stronghold. While defending a challenge with at least one character. Your side counts plus one strength for each card in shadows. Across the board. 
Response after challenge is declared against you. Bring Mo Kalen out of shadows. Pretty cool. That's very cool. Pretty cool. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's uh, first off, it's shadows across the board. It only works on defense, which is kind of a kind of a bummer, man. But if it worked on offense as well, attacking, that would be. Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, Not for the turn. Yeah. Um, this is going to do some work. I mean, okay. So there are a lot of reasons to say this isn't any good, mm -hmm. but there's good reasons to say that it is. Uh, one of which is how many times? Tell me how many times do you have a challenge? Where it's my three strength character attacking, and you only have your three three strength character to defend. Right. A million times. Yeah. One million, literally. <laughs> uh, Count them. And so now all of a sudden, you, I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Like I have to swing with two guys now instead of one. And I think that's important. And <laughs> you've got a shadows card, which plays well with you know Arya and uh, you know Mira. That or, one card that I think is okay. Yeah. I can't remember. She, what she do? <laughs> Something. <laughs> It's okay. I have to think. So Stark Shadows, and then maybe even not Stark Shadows. I don't know. I, it probably won't make it if it's not like a shadowy deck. But yeah, I mean, I, there was a weird shadow deck running around for a while. I mean, it's bizarre. If, if only because you have the uh, the Shadows Cat that turns off all the entry challenges. This plus that plus some Mirror Reed. It's like you have a winning deck right there. But you know what this also works really well with is Jumping Cat. Oh, Jumping Cat. It's like, That's hey, true. I'm in here. It's like four strength. Ah, Hi. Bye. You win. See ya. Jumping you Cat. You win. All right, so I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's kind of boring, it, but it's, it's not, okay. It's not awesome, but it, it's okay. Yeah. I think it's fair. All right, see ya. Moat. Give me, uh, what are we at, Sir Jorah? Sir Jorah. Give me Sir Jorah. All right, so his name's Sir Jorah Mormont. Uh, Mormont. We're familiar, Mormont. yeah. He's, uh, a... he's S1. Uh, strength 3, Tricon, of course. It's Targaryen. House Targaryen only, of course. It's Targaryen. Uh, no attachments except weapon. Uh, and then if Sir Jorah Mormont, or Mormont... I don't know. Uh, is discarded from your hand. Put him into shadows instead. Then draw one card. What is this? That's good. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, you're going to discard him into shadows. Uh, okay. Then draw one card. So this is the Targaryen Darkstar. Uh, pretty good. Three costs for three strength with three icons. Queen's Guard, Knight, great traits. I he don't... looks as rugged as he's ever looked. Yeah, it looks, this like, is crazy it looks like when he's... Uh, on the uh, the Iron Islands, about to uh, mess up some Greyjoys. I could be mistaken there, but who yeah, knows? It looks like he's in mess up mode there. It could be a warship behind him. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, I mean, uh, so if we look at just three strength, three cost, bicon, or tricon. <laughs> bicon, this is Targaryen. That's great, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's great. And yeah. then what is Targaryen, Hollow Hill, and otherwise weakness is the two claim entry challenge to empty their hands so they can't do all the nasty things that... Mm -hmm. If they're allowed to do them, we'll always win them the game. Yeah. Uh, so instead of you getting an advantage, now you're actually giving oh. them a card <laughs> and putting this guy into shadows, yeah, you're reducing his cost by two. Yeah. So essentially, you could get all this for one. You're you're gonna you're gonna put this in your deck. <laughs> you're gonna run it. You're gonna, you're Everyone's gonna run going it. to run it. You're gonna run it. I I love it. It's it's too good. What more? And it's a knight. Tar let's yeah. get some Targ knights going on. And Queen's Guard. There's probably some things there. Wait for it. I love it. <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, let's move on to the Harpy's Scourge. It's a mm. one cost, non unique attachment, and it has the most important keyword that any attachment can have, which is setup, mm -hmm. which means it's immediately 100% more playable than any other attachment without <laughs> 100% setup. 100% more. It, even infinitely more. <laughs> uh, challenge is discard a card from your hand and choose a character until the end of the phase. That character gets minus one strength, and attached character gets plus one strength. Yep. Pretty good. Yep. Hello, Burn. I mean, I think you're going to run this. Like, don't tell me you're not going to run this. Yeah, so don't would you. Don't tell me you're not going to run this. This this reminds me of the uh, Barristan Selmy uh, that you discard a participant character. I think it's minus two strength. Uh, this is essentially the same net swing of two strength, uh, but it's a little bit more flexible because you don't have to have that character participating. This pairs very nicely with oh, burn, man. and you put it on the right character with the right icon spread, or just a tricon. You know, why even worry about it? Just put it on a tricon, and you're good to go. I, I, <laughs> I think this is good design ultimately. You put it on um, Selmy. It's a weapon. Or not sell me. And I mean, moment. we understand how well these two work together, right? Yeah. You discard Sajora to pay this, yeah. and then he goes into shadows. Yeah. That's fun. Um, <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> okay, obviously, so it plays it plays in Targaryen's weakness. Again, we've seen good card yeah. design here. So it's not you, you uh. have to discard a card, which you don't want to do, but you're getting a repeatable burn effect anytime you want it forever. Mm hmm. Um, if your card draw is good, this, there's no reason to not so, run this. So, and we've got Jamie coming down the pipe here. I think I think you're going to run one or two of these in a burn deck. Yeah, I think you are. You're exactly right. Just 
think you are. I think you are as well. Uh, yeah, what's not to love there? Moving on. Or Dragon Pit. I mean, it's just, you can't win a challenge against Dragon Pit with this. The, the number of options that are, like, expanding from this cycle are fantastic. Targaryens, we get it. You lower yeah. our strength. <laughs> yeah, that's like, right. Come on. Uh, fine. Isn't there more to, to do here? Yeah, next up we have Sir Saristan Bellamy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce that. Sir Barristan Bellamy. Four costs, four strength, bicon, military and power, King's Guard and Queen's Guard. And a knight. First ever, I think, and a Knigget. No attachments, renown. Challenges, Neil. Well, who's he guarding? <laughs> Everyone. I mean, he can't guard both. Well, if, Unless they're always together. Well, if a uh, man and a woman love each other very much, <laughs> Uh, they become king's guards and queen's guards. Ah, uh, oh, it's weird. Um, no attachments around challenges. Kneel one influence or pay one gold to bring a king's guard or queen's guard character out of shadows. Can he bring himself out of shadows? Obviously, this is great. No, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is great. Everyone it is who, great. Everyone who's sitting there thinking this isn't great is not right. I mean, this is great. Uh, what card are you looking at? It's four, <laughs> four cost, four strength, by con renown. Okay. No attachments. Like that's a that's a foundation. You can really screw that up, and it's still probably okay. Frequently, no attachments is more of an asset than a hindrance. No attachments is good, and the fact that you can bring uh, kings or queens out of shadows at your fancy in the challenges phase with During influence a challenge, or gold, whenever you want, just Ugh. bring it out. You know, just. Maybe it's time to kneel a character, and hey, there's a King's Guard that does that in here. Maybe it's time for characters not to be saved. Well, there's. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, this is good. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Hey, I'm just a messenger. Don't blame me. I'm just telling you. Um, yeah, I think you're exactly right. Uh, it's fantastic, and it will only become more fantastic when we look at the rest of these King's Guards and even the previous ones. Uh, there's all kinds of synergies to be worked here, if only to reduce some of the cost of the pre-existing King's Guards that had interesting coming out of Shadows effects, because sometimes they were a little bit more expensive than you like. Like, why does this guy cost two to bring out of Shadows? Here's a way to circumvent that. Now it only costs one, or better yet, if you're Targaryen or Martell or anybody else who likes an influence, influence, it costs an influence. The it costs economy an influence. of the game. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Wait, I'm choking you, but I have influence, so... Tell me anyone who has ever enjoyed something that happened because influence was spent. Uh, no. Never. Like, no. no good effect in the game. Unless you're Martell or Targaryen. It's it. like, oh, I just screwed you over. Because <laughs> I spent my influence. That's what it is, always. It's like, That's all we do. gold yeah. is the unit of currency in the game. Nope. Can we you got influence. You can't spend it. Influence are the smiles of the economic world. It's like, I'll give you a smile to give you this effect, and it's like, eh, I can't spend a smile, but somehow it works in this game. I think it'll work. Don't ask me. Don't I think these King's Guard decks are going, to be, uh, are going to be weird, and I think there's going to be one of them that shines through as just phenomenal, but it will have to be piloted well. Yes. Really well. It'll be like a it'll be like a Bruno or an Atkinson or something that'll just like bring it in and be like. The, I think the crux it of it is going to be uh, playing a forgotten plans on the turn you anticipate them to play the King's Law. Mm-hmm. That'll be it. It'll be just like you would have to play Outwit well timed on a Valor. You have to play forgotten plans well timed on a King's yeah. Law. Yeah, and we think everyone's gonna be running King's Law at Worlds, right? But here's the problem. Everyone keeps saying everyone's going to be running King's Lot Worlds, which means no one's going to actually feel like they have to run King's Lot <laughs> Worlds. Right. Somebody else will bring it. Doing, <laughs> which means these Shadows decks, if they get brought, because everyone's going to be running King's Lot. What if we out-meta the meta before it's, it's even in the meta? It's how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. It's like, well, if everyone's bringing King's Lot, then no one's bringing it, so I'm bringing Shadows. But then it's like, well, if they stop early in that meta cycle, then it's like everyone will be bringing King's Lot. Then I'll lose. So By the way, we have, we have a little bit over a week until Worlds. It's like thanks, a week and a day. Thanks, Fantasy Fight, for <laughs> yeah. dropping this pack in our lap. Hope you, hope you guys like time. pulling a week of all-nighters. <laughs> Jeez. Anywho, next up, the, be the broken me. card of the pack. That makes me angry. It's because he's not Lannister, right? It, it, it's exactly right. Now, if Zach Bunn were here, and we've already had this discussion, he and I, um, it's like, wait, why is he neutral? His name's Lannister. <laughs> There's a house with that name. And he's like, yeah, but this represents a Jamie at a certain point in the books where he's more, you know, allegiant to the King's Guard, not so much his house. And it's like, no, Lannister. <laughs> Lannister. That's all that matters to me. I mean, what about the Hound? The Hound's always Lannister, right? Is there a neutral Hound? Uh, I yeah. Is there I, a neutral uh, hound? Maybe. I think there is. The yeah, yeah not. There's, there's totally a neutral Sir Hound. Jamie's more. And then there's a dual house Hound as well. Hmm. So, anywho, I don't know. I want him to be Lannister, especially with his effect. It's so Lannister y. Lannister -y. Well, why don't you read it and then right, we'll fine. talk about it. Privileges. All right, so uh, he's an S2, strength 3, bicon, military intrigue, Kingsguard, and a knight, no attachments, and renown. Uh, already it's making me mad. Uh, and then response 
after a card comes out of shadows, draw one card. And then in draw parentheses, one card. Okay. draw three cards instead if you control three or more Kingsguard characters. Not more than your opponent. Yeah. If you got so three it's all, out there. It's all on you. If you have three or more King's Guards, you got three cards. Hey, guess what? Who's that draw cap? <laughs> this guy. Three cards? One card? What? After a card comes out of shadows? After a card comes out of shadows in any phase whatsoever. In any phase. Whatsoever. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. <laughs> well, um... I mean, am I wrong here? Is this card too good? <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one here who thinks that this card is too good? <laughs> You're not. You're absolutely not. I guarantee everyone watching is probably thinking the same thing. We, Four costs for this. Who cares? This has been spoiled forever. <sighs> but like, let's look at a let's look at a location uh, known as is it King? It's King's Landing, right? S two. When a card comes out of shadows, you stand it and then you kneel it to draw a card, right? King's Kneel it to draw a card. It's, it's oh, a, yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, uh -huh. the King's Landing uh -huh. thing. Yeah, yeah. You have to control mm -hmm. more King's Landing than your Locations, opponent. Locations, yeah. Which sometimes is a real a real problem <laughs> for certain houses. It's funny. Um, <laughs> but so you have you have Sir Jamie Lannister kind of doing the same thing, but you also get this awesome body, three strength with renown, which Shadows decks love to speed the game up if, if they can because it's hard for Shadows to win in time. Mm -hmm. That is ultimately usually what the thing is like, I'm controlling you. And it's like turn 15 and you're like, yep. I'm bringing things out and you're like getting one challenge a turn, but like I'm at three power and you're at two. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of thing. So Renown is really good. And I, I don't think the draw three cards matters at all to this card. After a card, you've got a shadow draw If you get there, fine. But the, the uh, draw one card every time it comes out crazy. is good enough. Crazy. Sergio Pharrell. Crazy. Yeah. Like, when he comes out of shadows, draw a card. All the King's Guard. And the crazy. things that send cards back into shadows already. So it's like, oh, this costs me zero or one to bring out of shadows and something else is going to send it back. Mirror there, are there are cards coming in and out of shadows all the time now. After a card comes out of shadows, yeah, let a. it be known. Not your cards. So it's, Any yeah, cards. other guys' board. It's I forgot like, come about on that. Come on in. Come on in, yeah. So it's worse than I remember. The shadows oh. actually just going to be kind of carding around, just drawing everything. <laughs> carding around. And I, I just think this is such a strong effect. It's crazy. It's crazy how strong this is. You run this in Lannister and like a Shadows, Tunnels type deck for your card draw. Maybe you don't have to run Pyramids anymore. I'm just getting crazy. I'm just saying it's possible. I mean, Targaryen's going to make exceptional use of the Zach's Shadows Burn deck, kind of the build that he's pioneered for the past two years. Yep. Just got way better. Yep. You, can you beat that now? I don't know. Do you value this guy? Probably. Uh, no, he'll be back in Shadows before you drop uh, the die. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I mean, you're going to do every. You're going to work in the effects that pop your most powerful cards back into Shadows. Because Sir Preston can pop anything back into Shadows. Oh, yeah. By the way, if you needed another thing that did that, here it comes. Uh, <laughs> so, any, so, yeah, he's bananas. Anyway, this guy is great. Bananas. I, even, and, and even as I'm looking at this, these guys are all knights. They're all king's guard. This opens up a Knights of the Realm build to anybody in the game. Yeah. Right? So imagine Grey Dragon with, like, these guys. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, hey, we're drawing three cards this turn. We'll probably hit and draw cap with Jamie out. Now we can do some cool stuff with that. Like... He just opens it up. I mean, this card is just good. You'll find it in... This is the kind of guy who will be in every deck that has shadows in any facet whatsoever. I think you're right, Chance. It's just... You're right. So good. I don't know what to say. Yeah, the, the worst case scenario, <laughs> he's a four cost that draws a card, gas now and three strength, and two icons. You're right. Like, that alone is fine. It's phenomenal. I love it. Paul love it. Would you pay a goal to draw a card? I yes. Would. Yes. Already, yes. <laughs> <laughs> shadows won. Uh... We d I, I just kind of moved right through that, right onto the next card. What's his name? Are we, are we officially done with this? We're, we're done with this. The, the more I look at him, the more irate I'm going to get. Um, mainly, he's, a, he's a Lannister. He's mainly got because if you look at the top right corner, there's just like this gray shield. And I don't know what that means, especially given what's right next to that everyone shield. Has the goods. It says Lannister <laughs> blank. What? <sighs> It'd be like Daenerys Targaryen. Neutral. <laughs> well, she wasn't so much about being Targaryen anymore as when she was about freeing slaves and like liberating slave cities and stuff like that. So that's why she's neutral. It's like no. So you're just jelly, basically. I'm very jelly. <laughs> Come on. I mean, this is a Lan this is a main Lannister character with a super Lannister effect that I is bet neutral. I bet he still got his lion armor on too. Probably. It's the gilded plate. <laughs> it's the gilded plate, and I I don't understand. And it'd be one thing. So yeah, in conclusion, I think he should be Lannister, and he's very good for his cost. <laughs> now that I have all that out. <laughs> he's a good card. <laughs> yeah, he's a very good, yeah, card. A good card. You guys, let's, let's play him. Uh, let's move on to Sir Marin Trant. Trant. 
Look at that beard. He looks great. He has the best I mean, beard of all the Kingsguard. He's the guy you definitely want to play. And this is pretty cool, right? Here's why... What they've done with these cards, and I love this. Is, Armored horses, by the way. Oh, man, the more that I think win. about it and look at this, the cooler it is. Like, they've created kind of like what you'd get with, like, an Avengers-type team or, like, a like superhero team, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Or the Power Rangers, right? They're working together. Like, you, you see all these awesome heroes, mm -hmm. and then you get to choose, like, well, who's my favorite? And so, like, as we're looking at these Kingsguard, I'm, like, thinking, man, this guy looks awesome. The one whose sword is also a flute? <laughs> <laughs> So Samaritan Trent is in the running for my favorite Kingsguard, if I were to have to say it. Um, because he's got a well-armored horse, he's got a really cool helmet, the beard, he looks very cool, and he has stealth, which to me is like obviously a sign of how cool this guy is, if he can have stealth with all that armor. Sneaky. Um, Shadows 1, Samaritan Trent, 3 cost, military power, no attachment, stealth, Kingsguard knight. That's a lot of words. After a card comes out of Shadows, each opponent must choose and kneel one standing character location he controls. If able. <sighs> Keyword yeah. there is opponent. Let's think about this. Or at okay? least operative word. So the first time you think about this is not good. Yeah. Because I kneel my gold road. And it's like, oh, who, 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 you know, who cares? But. But it's then, your response. <laughs> then so I, you get to trigger it, and it's each opponent. Yeah, yeah, I trigger it, but like. Each opponent must, they choose a kneel. Yeah. So like, I choose my gold road and kneel it. Or mm -hmm. like, I choose a sunset sea that I haven't popped and kneel it. Not right. a big deal. But then you think of like, well, what if you play like Attack from the Sea? Well, then I'm, I gotta kneel a character. Nice. Ah, man. Or, uh, <laughs> oh, man. What is, what is the one? Relentless Persecution for characters yeah, and all relentless that kind of stuff. You gotta kneel stuff. So, and you know, sometimes you're playing against like a Martell board or a Lannister board and they've got their one Pintoshi up. That's true. And that's it. And it's like, well, you gotta kneel that or kneel a character. Yeah. Gotcha. And how many times can you trigger this? After card comes out of shadows. Any phase. Any phase. After working those shadows. So this could, I'm telling you, we could see some weird stuff. You know how weird it could get? <laughs> we could see that weird skip the skip the taxation phase nonsense. Oh, man. That's how weird this could get. That would be fun. I'm just saying, well, I'm going to bring this guy out in uh, plot. I'm going to bring this guy out in draw. And I'm going to bring this guy out in marshalling. And it's like, man, that's good. The planning ahead plot. That's good. That's and great. then it's like, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to return him to shadows. <laughs> uh -huh. and, then, and I'm drawing three cards for Jamie. And it's like. What is going on with this the, deck? The only yeah. thing that will ever make that absolutely ridiculous if we see a card that allows you to collect gold every time you from a plot card every time you reveal one, and it's not just like at the start of marshaling type of thing. Uh, the river plots do that, right? Or is it just add two gold to that, the treasure? Those rate? ones are conditional based off of other river plots. What about like that. what about uh, what about the uh, either get zero gold and two claim or six gold and no claim? Do, oh, do you Feast get that famine. immediately, Feast or famine. is it? Ooh, Does the plot I'll have to reread that. that. Yeah, everyone's like, yeah, we'll all have to reread that because no one has played yeah, it in feast, six years. I would, but every time you do the filter and you're like, show me all the two claim plots, <laughs> feast or famine. <laughs> what? Uh, what was that? I don't know about that <laughs> What was that? But anyway, this guy's pretty redonkulous, I think, again. Um, I think he's good, yeah. Yeah, I think he's pretty good. Uh, it's, it's something you get to trigger. It's something you can synergize with other effects. Um, I, I like it. Oh, my question is, Last two words, if able. Does that mean that you get to circumvent any weird scenarios that we're all familiar with in this game where it's like, well, I'm going to kneel my already knelt yeah, character. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, choosing your one standing character location. Okay, so it's standing character. Has to be character location. Very specific. Okay, yeah. so no circumvention on that one. Yes, so you're, you're forced into it. It's good. It's mm -hmm. good. So I think there's synergy here. I, I think the more that I'm looking and thinking about these shadows, like especially if you're just thinking, putting all these guys in a deck and trying to make it work, um, I feel like it's going to be one of those decks that certain games, it's going to go off and you're going to be smoked. Yeah. And then other games, key, key components aren't going to get on the board. And like now I can only bring one dude out during the challenges phase because I don't have the guy that can bring a King's Guard out during any phase. Mm -hmm. and I don't have the guy that can put things back into shadows. And then you Valor the other guy. And then it's like, well, King's now, I, now Valor. I'm just playing King's these Valor. weird things. So. Just repeat all the plots. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I think it's... Uh, I think it. I think it's going to be an interesting uh, It'll experience. fill a niche for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. So Sir Man, I mean, he's a dude. He's a dude. Let's move on. All right. Uh, you think Sir Man didn't uh, own the superhero team? Yeah, that's he kind right. Kind of like a little weirdo. Didn't that's he? right. He's he's the Hawkeye, <laughs> whatever his name is of the Avengers. Um, he's just kind of broody over there. I think that's appropriate. Um, so he's S one Sir Mandan Moore, three strength, one icon. It's military. Kingsguard Knight. Imagine that. No attachments and deadly. If you have more cards in shadows than each opponent, important to remember that opponents' characters cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. What is going on here? 
What is well, going screw on you to Greyjoy there, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, or dupes, run that binder. In the, run the binder, one ofs, everything. In the grand, so in the grand scheme, if you're making a, a Shadows Kingsguard deck, I'm gonna say I'm just gonna go on a limb here and say that this guy might not make it in. I think you're right. This is one of the few that. Might not get there. Pretty conditional effect. One I mean, icon. certain matchups, but mm. yeah, like one icon and deadly on a military icon doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, yeah. really doesn't matter. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest. Um, so yeah, I think of all the Kingsguard so far, he's the weakest. But he's still okay. But he's still good. Yeah, I mean, anything that'll turn off saves against certain houses at certain times can be pretty cool. And if if anything, he's a one of. He's in your. Uh, Shadow's toolbox, and sure. at the right time, oh, here he is. And and you know what you can do. Uh, where's where's the homie that brings things out of Shadows? Greenfield. Mr. Oh, Barrison, Barrison. Sell me. Yeah, at the so right time. So you do a military oh. challenge. They defend, expecting fully to save, and then you kneel mm -hmm. and bring a dude out of Shadows. And he, now they can't he's save. Your, he's your best friend on those focused offense turns. <laughs> We've been having a lot more of those we around have. the store recently, by the way. <laughs> We've it's had a lot of janky decks bit, floating around. It's a bit weird. That's a bit weird. we got the world's insomnia. Yeah, that's right. All right, um, well, tell let's us about at, Preston. Let's look at Sir Preston Greenfield. Obviously. The, the knight without a face. Obviously, he's the knight. He's the knight's knight. This this is just the standard guy. He's like the Lancelot, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kingsguard and a knight, two strength. That's weird. Uh, military power, only zero to bring out. No attachments. Any phase, return a Kingsguard or Queensguard character control to Shadows. No cost at all. No cost at all. Any phase action. No cost so at all. it's like, oh man, is he about to Valor? Oh, Shadow, 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 Shadow. Once per round. Oh, once per round. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Which I didn't read. This is my fault. Yeah. I was just looking at that art. It was so good. Oh, anyway. But you can, so. Once per round is still. Well, you've got to think, right? So let's say in the taxation phase. Taxation phase, you put one back in, and then the pre plot, you put one back in. That's been twice per as once per round. On That's both two ends. saves. So you still get two saved. I think I think he's res I think he's good. I think he's pretty good. He's too. a toolbox. He costs, yeah, and he costs zero to bring out, so you can bring him out at the end. Uh, it's, yeah, no, 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 no. Good stuff. It's good stuff. Next up, obviously the best. I mean, <laughs> obviously this is the best looking one. Oh, of course, he's wearing a turban. <laughs> What is it about turban? Turbans and armor is something that like you just hit the two things I think. But like not only does he have the turban, uh, but he's got like he's got that extra flap there that he can like mask himself up, and he's like this turbaned awesome white king's horse, guard. white horse, white cape. It's yeah. fantastic. Anyway, it's Sir Aerys so Cart. We all know him uh, primarily if you're Lannister or Martell. Anyway, up until now, he's S one. He's three strength, military intrigue icon, king's guard, knight. Of course, no attachments, and then reading. Response, after a card comes out of shadows, imagine that. Uh, choose and stand one character you control. I mean, where, <laughs> my first, we, we've been here, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. we, we've been here, we understand what standing effects do to broken things. But wait, you can only do this three times a phase. Three times per phase. <laughs> That's fantastic. Right? Why, why, <laughs> what, why is li it not? Limiting <laughs> anything to three times in a phase you might as well not print that because it's like that is more times that you could ever want to do anything like that in a game. So you have you have this guy out. You have Sir Celestin Bellamy, uh, who you can spend influence or gold to bring a Kingsguard or Queensguard character out of shadows in the challenges phase. Oh well, I didn't quite marshal anything. Wonder why that is because I have five cards in shadows and they're all these guys. Um, I don't know. Any, any any card comes out of shadows. You can stand anything. Why does it not stand a king's card you control? I don't know. Why does it not fit the theme? But it's okay ultimately. It, it's very good ultimately. So good. It's this card good. is so good. This will make it into decks that have nothing to do with king's cards. That's right. Nothing to do. We've been here with street wave and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we've been here with this. Man, we street wave. There's a card I forgot about. All this weird stuff. I mean, we've been around this. This is going to just see. It's just great. I love this. It's bananas. Just a good uh, a good plant card. Plants to make me go crazy. It's making its own food. All right, hit me with the last one here. All right, uh, well, we have two more. Uh, next up, we have two. okay, yeah, Sir Boris Blount. He looks Blount. cool too. I would say he's vying for position. Yeah, he's looking over his shoulder at all times. He's S zero, two strength, military and power icon, Kingsguard knight, no attachments, and reading response after Sir Boris Blount uh, comes out of shadows. Each of your characters gets plus one strength until the end of the phase. Not Kingsguard, each of your characters. Each of your Everything characters. Everything on the yeah. board, yeah. Excuse me. No, no, you didn't say it Did right. I say it? No, okay, you good. said it right. I, I don't just, know what I'm saying from any given I was reiterating <laughs> that it's every character on the board gets oh, plus yeah. one strength. Oh yeah, it's bananas. Again, the trans Kingsguard synergy. 
showing itself. The question there. here: Let's say I let's say I'm running an intimidate unopposed deck. Do I run this card? Yes. Probably. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? In my Greyjoy unopposed Intimidate Knights deck, yes. do I run this card? Yes. yes. I mean, Kingsguard, with the kind of general, awesome, across-the-board, cool effects that they've worked into them, can go into pretty much any deck. It's like, what, what was I lacking? Was it card draw? Was it extra strength when I needed it? Was it, uh, you know, just anything? And Renown, is guy, stealth, this deadly? This is the guy who sits in the toolbox, and it's like, oh, you think you're going to win that challenge? Or I'm going to kneel and influence and, this guy. And I'm all gonna... you have to do... Is knowing to play that forgotten plans on the King's Law, and That's you're, it. you're done. That's the key. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be a cat and mouse. It is. In the cat and mouse Our, game, no one's going to run King's Law. Cat and mouse. This is my King's prediction. Game. No one's going to run King's Law at Worlds. We're going to outmeta ourselves. Not a single person is going to do it because everyone's going to say, "Well, those guys from Tulsa are going to bring it." It's like no. Nope. No, we're not. I'm not. Because we thought the guys from DC were going to bring it. And then we thought the guys from Missouri were going to bring it. Yeah, the Springfield guys. And New York's going to bring it. Yep. Finish it off with all my oath. 371 and reveal. Put a King's Guard or Queen's Guard with the Shadows Crest and the Shadows from your dead or discard pile. What else do you say about this? It's a good plot. You know, you run it. It's King's I mean, Guard. this completes the set. It's 371. I mean, you run. Can't kill him. You run right? on my oath. You run. Uh, you swore an oath. And then you run. Um, what is that? Uh, the tourney plot. Oaths everywhere. Yeah. So you, you run uh, the, all the things that help your knights, that help your king's guard. That's three out of seven plots right there, and they're all fantastic. In 371, you win an initiative. It's yeah. cool. I mean, I don't know. But I, honestly, I don't know if this makes it in a deck. Yeah, we'll see. I, I truly don't know. Because 371 with this effect, that's kind of good. Yeah. There's, it's plots are too competitive these yeah, days. Yeah, it's interesting. It's hard. So there um, you have it. All right, so what a pack, right? It's this phenomenal. is probably the most significant pack that's come out in the past year, mm -hmm. two years. I can't think of anything that was bigger for me except like where loyalty lies. Like there were some weird Tale of Champions stuff that was pretty significant. Yeah. But this is just every house it, it, has got it keeps to look at this. Pushing the envelope. Scratch their head. It's like this is a must have pack without question. Yeah. Well, all right. I guess that's all we can ask for, right? Yeah, that's all I can ask for. Uh, so thanks, guys, for watching. We, we truly appreciate the viewership, and uh, this is incredible. Um, if you want this pack, which you do, Why you, you, ha you got to have it. Uh, <laughs> it's available in our store, teamcounter.com slash store. You'll find it there. And uh, if you want it delivered right to your door whenever you want, uh, not whenever you want, I guess. When it comes out. When it as comes out. As soon as it comes out. Because <laughs> I wanted it a month ago. I want ago. it now. <laughs> Uh, then sign up for a subscription. Our Game of Thrones subscriptions, uh, people seem to dig them quite a bit, and mm -hmm. we love providing the service. So thanks for watching, and we will catch you uh, at Worlds. Come see us. Let's hope. Let's hang out. See ya.